The first half goal strategy is one of the most common strategies I use. I'll show you what it is, how it works and the games that it works best on. But first, if you want to watch exclusive content and get your hands on useful trading resources, you can support the channel through Patreon and get your name featured in videos like this one. Right, promotion over, let's get on to the strategy. The first thing that you'll need to decide is what site you're going to place your bets on. I personally recommend an exchange like Betfur because you'll typically get better odds than bookmakers but much more importantly, if you start consistently winning on a bookmaker, it won't be long before they come along and ban you from using their site. Once you're on Betfur, navigate to the game you want to trade. Find this tab here called Half Time, and you'll find this market called First Half Goals 0.5. And you can place a back bet on over 0.5 goals to profit if either team score in the first half. So that's fairly simple, right? But, as you might have noticed, the odds for a goal in the first half start off very short. So if you place your bet at the start of the game, you'll be risking quite a lot to win not that much relative to your stake. To understand why the odds start off so short, you need to have access to long-term statistics which show the probability of a goal in the first half. And look at the few, I have these statistics. Across just under 10,000 games I've collected data for, 69.7% of games have had at least one goal scored in the first half. If we turn that percentage into a decimal odds by doing 1 divided by the percentage and multiplying by 100, we get what should be the average odds for a first half goal. If we compare that number to the average back odds for a first half goal in some upcoming games, you know, we get a fairly similar number. This means that if you bet on a first half goal in each one of these games, you'll probably break even in the long run, unless you get very lucky or very unlucky. <laughs> and so far, this doesn't sound like a very good strategy, does it? I'm basically telling you that you aren't gonna win because the market is more or less efficient. But you definitely can win with supposedly efficient markets. I know this because I have been winning, and if I can win, you can definitely win too. Instead of placing a back bet at the start of the game, I tend to place it at some point in play. During the first half, the odds will drift out in a somewhat uniform manner, the longer there isn't a goal scored. This of course makes sense. With every minute that passes by, there is less time remaining in the half, so there's less opportunity for either team to score. The probability of a goal decreases, making the odds increase. Instead of back in here at the start of the game, I'll place my bet later in the half to get a better odds and a higher potential profit. For the skeptics out there who think it isn't possible to win at betting, firstly, why are you watching a video with the word betting in the title? But yes, these people will say, if the average odds at the start of the game accurately reflects the probability of a goal being scored, why wouldn't the odds after so many minutes into the game not accurately reflect the probability of a goal being scored in a time remaining in the rest of the half? There's no way you can win at betting on this. The markets are efficient and blah, 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 blah. Blah. To some extent, these people are actually right. You aren't going to find a magic point in the market, you know, some certain minute in the half where betting will be inherently valuable. The reason I bet later in the half isn't for that reason. I'm not trying to beat the mechanics of the market here. The reason I'm doing it is because of how I expect the half to play out. There are certain games where the stats suggest that a goal really early in the half isn't likely. So instead of betting at the start of the game, I will bet at a later point at better value odds. For example, that may be approximately the 23rd minute mark, when on average the odds will be 2.0. Now the exact time in the half where the odds reach 2.0 won't be the 23rd minute every game. The 23rd minute is just the average time it takes for the odds to reach 2.0. But you might not want to bet on the 23rd minute. You might find a particular game where you think goals are likely to be scored only after the 35th minute. So after the 23rd minute, the average odds will be about 2.0. And if you want to know what the odds would be in the average game after 35 minutes, you would have to download football goal scoring data online, work out some Excel magic to calculate the expected odds for a goal being scored during any period of the game. Or to give myself another shameless plug, you can download my minute by minute guide from my Patreon, which breaks down the average probability and odds for a goal to be scored during any period of the first half. This could be like I just said, the probability of a goal scored after the 35th minute, but you can also get creative with this and determine the probability of a first half goal between any certain range, for example, between the 15th and the 30th minute. Wherever you decide to place your position later in the half, what you'll be essentially doing is cutting out all this period of the game where you don't think a goal is likely to be scored. And instead you can back up better odds than you would do at the start of the game and get a better return for the same stake. The you can't win at betting person will come back and say, well, if the average odds at the start of the game truly represent the probability of a goal, surely on approximately the 23rd minute when the odds are 2.0, 
the odds accurately reflect the probability of a goal being scored in the remaining time of the half. And to be fair, it is easy to fall into this trap of thinking that the market is always efficient and it isn't possible to be profitable. I know it's easy to fall into this trap because I've done it myself many times before, but what it's failing to understand is the role of skill and selecting the right markets has on your overall results. When the odds for a first half goal do reach 2.0, the long-term data will suggest that on average, about 50% of the time, there will be a goal in the half, suggesting that it is an efficient market. But that 50% average includes games where the chance for goal is much lower than 50% and games where the chance is much higher than 50%. Those two will cancel each other out to give you that overall average figure of 50%. Yes, if you just randomly go in and place bat bets at odds of two in the first half goal market, you're going to win about 50% of the time. But the important key with this strategy is that you aren't betting at random. You are going in and being selective and choosing the right markets that are most suitable for this strategy. These are the markets where you obviously think a goal is more likely to be scored than the odds suggest. This is why I find odds of 2.0 such a desirable entry point for this market because then you know exactly what you need. I know my job is to try and find and bet on the 50% of the games where the goal is more likely to be scored and try to avoid the games where the goals are less likely to be scored than the 50% average. So how can I do this? Well, I'm using statistics, my betting experience and my overall football knowledge which I've gained from watching the sport all my life. To show that it's possible, take these six games, three of which had a goal scored in the first half after the 23rd minute. If you had bet on over 0.5 first half goals in each of these games when the odds reached 2.0, you would have won on three, lost on three, and overall broke even. And the can't win at betting person will be happy with their work showing market efficiency. However, when you look at the attack momentums for each of these games, you don't need to be Albert Einstein to predict which of the three games had the goal and which three didn't. So if you select the right games to bet on and then ignore the games which aren't suitable for the strategy, then yes, you can be profitable. I selected somewhat cartoonish examples to deliberately make my point here. In reality, not everything is going to be as easy as this. You're going to find some games where nothing seems to be happening and a goal is scored out of nowhere. And you're going to find games where both teams are creating chance after chance but the goal never comes. And not every game will reach the same odds at the same time through the half. But overall, the point I'm making is a genuine one. If you're selective and choose the right games, you can beat that baseline probability figure and be profitable using this strategy. I decide where during the first half I'm going to place the back bet based on where I think the goal is likely to be scored. A few times in the video so far, I've used the example of the 23rd minute, approximately the 23rd minute, when the odds are gonna be 2.0. I've only been picking this example because it makes it easier from a tracking and a psychological perspective to know if you're profitable or not. If after 100 games of betting at odds of 2.0 in this strategy, there's only one of three things that can really happen. Either I'll win approximately 50% of the time, showing that I'm no better than picking games at random. Option B would be us to win significantly less than 50% of the games. This would show that I would have a bias for selecting games where the probability of goal is much lower than what the odds are actually suggesting. And option C would be for us to win significantly more than 50% of the games. This would suggest that my football knowledge and my game reading is significantly better than picking games at random. In other words, I'd be profitable. But as I've alluded to, you might not want to enter odds of 2.0. It all depends on which game you are trading and you can develop your strategy and entry points as creatively as you want for this strategy. Getting on to the really important stuff now, and that is finding the games that are the best to use this strategy on, games where there's a higher chance of a goal than the odds suggest. Probably the best way to do this is the good old fashioned sitting down and watching the game itself and reading and seeing if a goal is likely to happen anytime soon. Being able to accurately read a game and see what's going on is a very difficult skill and it's made even more difficult by the fact that you've got a financial decision on the line as well. That's not good for your emotional state in normal situations. So even though it is hard, it is possible. And some general tips for you is number one, to just ignore everything that commentators and pundits are saying. There's probably some commentators and pundits who are okay, I guess, but in a general sense, they're all lost in their own narratives and they've not got really anything useful to tell you. The second thing is you don't have to be a tactical guru, but trying to work out what's actually happening in the game, the team's strengths and the team's weaknesses is a very useful skill. 
There are many channels here on YouTube that can give you invaluable information to help in this regard. But the only way you can really get better is to watch and study more and more football. But even if you are a fantastic game reader, there's only a limited number of games that you can watch and bet on a week. So you have to have alternative strategies out there. And one of those alternative strategies is analysing the stats for each of the teams. You can use sites like SofaScore, Footy Stats and Soccer Stats. Breaking the teams down into home and away form is where you're going to find your opportunities. Looking for key areas of goal scoring activity at certain times during the first half. Depending on how much time you have, you don't have to stop there either. You can fall further into the stats and start studying the XG of both teams on the sites like InfoGoal and Understat. You can really hone in those times where the teams create or concede the most chances. Once you've found the game and the rough of the time and the odds you want to place the bet on, you can simply go on to Betfair, add a back bet to the market at the odds you want and make sure you set the bet to keep in play. And you don't even have to stick around to keep track of the game if you don't want to. You can simply let it run and check your results later. But the important thing is that no amount of research before a game can stop the game playing out in a completely different manner in real life. Even if you can't have access to watch the game, you can still track the game on sofa score and see if you want to keep your position or pull the position from the market. Just remember that even if you had a ginormous edge using this strategy, you're still going to be losing a significant number of markets. You're just going to be winning over the long term. But if losing annoys you, then I've got some bad news for you. Betting probably isn't for you. Just remember to not fall into some stupid, ridiculous, completely ineffective loss tracing strategy. Using a prediction model can be really useful for this strategy. I've made a video on my channel before on how to create a prediction model. And you can use that model, but instead of using the data from the league table, which I outlined in that video, you can copy and paste data from the halftime Premier League tables instead. And that way, you'll get estimated odds for a first half goal based on the team's previous goal scoring data. This is very, very useful. And you can go and watch that video here and learn how to create a profitable betting model. I might be a bit biased, but you know, I actually think that video is quite informative. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.